Welcome back to The New Norm. I'm Dr. Lou Graham. This programming is brought to you by Midway Dental and Catapult Education. Today, I'm really joined by my brother from another mother, Dr. Ron Kaminer, one of my closest, closest friends in the world, a member of Catapult, a great speaker, uh, and really just an amazing dentist. Well, why would I pick Ron to be on this show today? Ron's a dentist in the war zone of New York. He's already had two patients in his practice pass away. And as you know, the numbers in New York, they've just been profoundly staggering. The latest of yesterday were 731 wonderful people passed away in one day, and that equated to a patient every two minutes. And this is where Ron lives. And Ron really has been living this. And I think it's important as we get into the discussion in this segment and the next segment, it's really all about testing and prevention and being safe. How important is this? Yesterday, it was noted on the news that 700 employees at the Henry Ford Medical Center have come down with the virus. We all know that our medical teams are in the front lines. Well, so are the dental teams in the near, near future. And if we have 700 people go down in one hospital, to me, that's just an enormity of a number. Last night on the news, Lester Holt talked about antibody testing in the office. Now he's talking medical office, not even dental office. And they interviewed experts on antibody testing. Well, today Ron and I are gonna talk about multiple different tests of what we're currently offering now and what we're going to be offering. Why is this even more important to all of you? I openly think we will be the next front line. And I think many of you out there feel the same way. So it's all about being prepared. It's absolutely all about being prepared when we go back to work from emergency patients to elective care, there will be a new norm. So as I bring Dr. I'll just call him Ron onto the program. I would never call him doctor. As I bring Ron onto the program, I think it's really essential to start with a couple things. Ron, why have you tested yourself already twice for the virus? And then tell me about the email that you sent out to your patients about testing in your office. Let's start with that. So brother, welcome to the show. Let's talk about your own testing and what went on in your office maybe three weeks ago. Go ahead. Well, Lou, thanks for having me. Uh, so about three weeks ago or so, I was approached by a manufacturer company that we work with called Perio Protect, and they had access to one of their laboratories that's been around for a while that does biofilm testing in medicine and dentistry. And we were told that they have a saliva test for COVID. Simple, basically spit into a receptacle, send it off, and their test is highly accurate. Obviously, we're on the front lines as dentists. People come into our office in the last three weeks before this even got as serious as it got. We were wearing our regular right. masks, whether we're one, two, or whatnot, and potentially exposed. So initially, I said, it's an easy test. Let me go ahead and test myself. And I did, and I was negative. I then said to myself, and started looking around and I hear people trying to get tested, including my office manager who was sick, but they, she couldn't get a test because she wasn't sick enough. Right. And I sent an email out to my patient saying, hey, if you can't get a test, if you're sick and you can't get a test, I have access to a test from a laboratory right. that is highly accurate. And my belief was that it's incumbent upon us to think of our patients as our extended family, and we have to provide these for our patients. And so I actually started doing that. Okay. And so basically, this test for microgenics, of which now I've used six times for patients, it's really a saliva test. So it's, you're not sticking something up really up into your nasal area, it's a saliva test. So tell me, what did you do and tell me the process, because I think it's an important process, because we're going to talk about how we're going to integrate this into potential protocols. Tell me your process for those patients that you were doing. 
so basically for anybody that wanted a test, we custom yeah. ordered them a test. So we just basically go on the right. website of, the, of Microgenics and order a, a test for them. We ordered we, the first day we had 25 patients asking us for tests for them wow. or family wow. or family members. Right. And by day two, there was an additional 35 people asking for tests from for themselves or their family members. Right. And really what you do is you get the test into your office, you fill out a prescription, sign it, your NPI number's on it, and you hand them the test. And I think where it's really important to understand is that we're not doing the test. The test is self-administered, there's instructions. The patient is doing the test. We're providing right. the access to the test with a result in 36 hours. And I don't have to tell you that most people going for testing in their state today are lucky to get a result in three to five days, unless they're critically yeah. ill. If they go into a testing center, my office manager got tested now after being sick. She went for a test Sunday and she doesn't have a result yet. Right. So, so right. this allowed them quicker access and a simple test that was highly accurate. So we received it, patients sent it out, and then we reported back to them within 36 hours whether they were positive or negative for COVID-19. Right. right. So now it's interesting how fast everything changes. So when we were told about the test, the fees were definitely substantially higher. They've come down in price now. And one of the interesting things, Ron, is that like patients were waiting to go get tested. My patients have asked me, can you get me tested? So now what I'm doing is I'm actually filling it out online. I go online to Microgenics, we'll supply everybody the you know, web contact information. And basically I take the patient's credit card, fill in the data, and they can have the test shipped to their house. They don't even have to come in and get the test. Tell me your thoughts on this and how, tell me your thoughts on this. Well, I, I think we're looking at a couple of different phases. For now, okay. it's about access yep. to the test. Yeah. How can you know? Okay. How can we create access to the test to be adjuncts to the medical providers and the hospitals? The hospitals, especially in New York, but I'm sure Chicago is no different, are flooded with very sick people, and we know this disease right. can range from extremely very sick to the mildest or no symptoms at all. Right. So if we can provide access for people that maybe are not going to the hospital because they're not sick enough or are scared to go to the hospital because they may have mild symptoms. When they can't get access to this test in other ways, I think we're doing a phenomenal service for our patients. And as you said in your intro, we're gonna be that front line. We are that front line. We're 1A or 1B right now from the doctors and nurses. Right, so, you know, it's interesting. And I know they say we're quote unquote, just dentists. But when two of my patients come back with positive tests, then they're asking us for guidelines. And I go, you have to go into self-isolation. They ask, what does that mean? How, how, how do I socialize with my family? And I go, the number one most exposed component of this now is your family. And so, I mean, I, I just think this relationship of medical and dental really transposes us into a position where I mean, we have to give release forms. We're not responsible for the information from the test. But on the other hand, patients are gonna be asking us for guidance and as dentists, we have to be as educated as possible in all this because this is what our patients are gonna expect from us. Your thoughts? Yeah, so I, I think that we have to be careful walking the line because state yep. by state, we have to make right. sure we're practicing within the scope of what we're allowed to do interpersonally we we can tell them what to do we want to tell them but my st my i've said things like you said but i've prefaced it said hey listen you have a positive result now you have to call your physician and take guidance for your physician that's what yep. you have to do at this point the interesting thing is some physicians have been a little bit bewildered on where did they get this test and what is this saliva test so they're learning in the process as well but they're, the patients are, are listening and they're going to their physician for the guidance on how to proceed. We both know, yes, quarantine, yes, stay away. But I think now that's where the physician should get involved. And we pass the baton off to their primary to 
complete the task. Agreed. So I think there's a whole process here, which we're really going to have to get into, Ron. One is proper screening protocols before they come to the office. So you're asking the right questions. Then when they come to the office, what do we want to have already been prepared for? So for example, it, you know, the, the latest news out of China, the very latest, in fact, out of Shanghai, was that they're finding in their select studies that some recovered patients don't have high levels of the IgG or the antibodies for like what, we're, what we've been told is like almost like a pseudo immunity to the virus. So some of these patients basically are, are not immune even though they've already recovered. So I think what I'd love to talk about next is let's say you send out your screening questions and a patient comes to your office. The question then becomes, when do you want them taking this virus test from Microgenics? And then we'll get into the antibody test. So let's get into your thoughts on using this test before we see patients. What are your thoughts on that, Ron? So I think what I'm going to do is flip things around a little bit for you, Lou. So okay. the test that is coming out is and will be available very, very soon will be a finger stick antibody test. And that finger right. stick antibody test has two components. It'll test for antibodies, and that will be your level of IgG, but also test for potential shedding of virus, which is your IgM. The problem with that test is it's only 90% accurate. Not bad, but it's not 100%. So I think the way we're going to use it in our office and, and, and protocols are being evolved is I think that test is going to be our first line of defense. Take that test. If you have antibodies, you're good. You should be good to go. That You have no risk. We have no risk. We're good. But if you don't have antibodies and you're shedding virus, your IgM is high, well, that test is only 90% accurate. At that point, I would then say you need to either take the saliva test, which is considered to be as accurate, if not more accurate, according to microgenics than the swab, or at least defer to the physician at that point and said, hey, this test showed there's shedding virus. They can take that the antibody test with them to show they're shedding IgM. Now test them. And at that point, I would not treat that patient because potentially they're walking into your office, sitting in a waiting room, and they can get four or five or whatever number of people sick. So I think that's the protocol that we're going to start to use once we've sent out the questionnaire to that for the patient to answer. So let's do this. I'm going to go and I'm going to go point counterpoint with you and then we'll get to our, we'll close and then we'll get to our next segment. Point counterpoint. If someone fills out the questionnaire, they've been in self quarantine, they're low risk, they've never been exposed, they haven't been to a high, their, their job isn't high risk, all of them are, are low, low. When they enter your office, first off, in your new norm, do you really see a waiting room or do you see one person at a time coming in? Now tell me the truth. Ideally, we see one person at a time coming in, ideally. But how are you gonna tell okay. a family that they can't book two or three kids or have a husband and a wife coming together and maybe you're not finished up with the patient before? There, there, things can happen. We, we work in a static environment. So ideally, yes. Realistically, who knows? Well, ideally, here's my world. People are going to have to understand where we're going. And I think the first thing that will happen, Ron, and then we'll close on this note, and then we're going to go, we'll come back to the next segment. This is what I would tell everybody to do in their practice. I think they have to either send out a letter, an email, or do a video about what their new protective policies are gonna be in their practice when they open or for emergency patients now. And when they send this letter out to their patients and explain what they're doing step by step, I think they'll have to say, we have a one patient waiting room, you will be texted, you'll have to come into the office and escort it. And that's the way it's gonna be right now. But I do think 
We have to be communicating this to our patients as step one, then why the screening, why the testing? Would you agree on that? I do agree on that for sure. Okay, God, I've waited 30 years to hear that. That's great. Um, <laughs> so let's do this one. Let's get into our next segment, protocols. I think it'll be interesting to hear our two different of approaches or they'll be common. Why don't we, I'm gonna close off on this segment, say thanks for being here. We're gonna go to a part two segment and that will be talking more on protocols with virus testing and antibody testing. Ron, don't go far, thanks. Thank you. So let me be clear, we wanna hear from you. We wanna hear your questions. So what we want you to do is we want you to go to education at midwaydental.com. Shoot us your questions. We'll go right to the experts. I know I'm not the expert, so let's go ask the experts what we should be doing as our next step next week, the week after, and thereafter. I look forward to hearing from you.